um, is familiar with Mr. Batson, there has been some injunction proceedings that the court has issued. Is there um, anything else that you are aware of? I think you're aware of most of it, Your Honor, and the issues still persist. Um, I spoke to him this morning, but there's some, you know, issues persisting with him. Sure, sure. All right. I do find, Mr. Batson, there is sufficient probable cause for each of those charges. Mr. Batson, I'm going to set your bonds in each of those cases in the amount of $2,500. That will be cash or surety. And if you make those bonds, um, you may have no contact with the victim in that case. Mr. Batson, your injunction is still in place and you may have no contact with the uh, petitioner in that injunction. Okay, Mr. Batson, however, I want to hold you to have life management have an evaluation. Okay, Mr. I don't McDaniel. I really have a life uh, uh, evaluation by no life management. I'm tired of y'all slandering my name. Number one, that's slander. Cause it ain't nothing wrong with me. Sure. Okay, I understand. And, and I don't want I no certainly... evaluation with no life management, bro. I'm tired of you slandering my name like you like I got some kind of mental history or something. Bro, I don't even have no, no history Mr. Of Batson. No mental disorders or nothing. No, it's actually sure. slander what you keep doing. Okay. Quit slandering Mr. my name in public. Yes, sir. Mr. Batson, before you can bond out, I want and you to And it ain't they don't undergo... even have me on nothing. They don't even have me Listen. on nothing. You talking about all probable right. cause to arrest me, bro. I wouldn't even trespassing on nobody property. It's really all Mr. The law. McDaniel. Hell, got no if you will please mute the microphone. It is apparent, Mr. Batson, that we the communications have now broken down between the two of us. So before you are able to bond out, I want to know if life management makes any recommendations regarding. Makes any recommendations regarding any release options while you are on release for those two charges. Mr. Goodson, my suggestion would not be that he come back on the first day that Judge Mercer is back. It would be that he come back at arraignment if he hasn't bonded out. Once life management does his evaluation, if you can make me or Judge Mercer aware of any recommendations, then on that very next day, we can bring him back up. If there are no further conditions that are recommended on his release, great, we won't do it. If there are, then we will certainly consider it and the state and the defense can make their arguments for or against it. Um, and then he can bond out after that. Oh, yes, sir. Perfect. Excellent. All right. So Mr. Goodson clarified for me that traditionally life management will send you, Mr. McDaniel, the evaluation, and then that's perfect. And you will make the court aware um, of the results and that we need to bring your client back. Is that right? Correct, Your Honor. Um, you know, Excellent. just to let you know, I, I mean, I've dealt with him several times. I don't think he's going to be able to make a bond no matter what, but um, I'll try to get that life management, you know, see if they can make some recommendations. Because it, it may also, depending on what and the ultimate resolution, if the case, if the court, if, excuse me, if the state is able to prove its case, if the, it those recommendations shit. may be helpful. <laughs> Mr. McDaniel, if you'll just mute it so that he does not interrupt the proceedings, that would be helpful. Um, it, that evaluation may prove helpful for a possible resolution. Okay. All right, guys, if there is nobody further at the jail, then that concludes court. Uh, Mr. McDaniel? You can have Mr. Batson have a seat or he can leave the first appearance room, whatever you prefer. Um, this is an aberration. And again, it was not a malicious or intentional um, or knowing violation of the law. Um, and he's truly sorry. He would like to say something to the courts. Of course, see what one moment, please. I need to get a different sheet to because the title was agreed to and it will require probation for. I got to get something. Hold on one second, please. All right, Ms. McDuffie, 
Your Honor, that was essentially all I was going to bring up was the fact that I Mr. understand. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, could you state your name, please? Your Honor, it appears that Ms. Smith, Mr. Smith has not yet been brought by the jail. I'm pretty sure he has. Hello. There we are. Hello, Mr. Smith. Uh, my arthritis is kicking my butt right now. I can barely, my arthritis, I got arthritis in my hand and my neck real bad. Okay. But I can I can I can do my case. It just started bothering me just a second ago. All right. All right, we're here for a review and a bond. Well, all I have is a review before me. Uh, where's the it's like no mm -hmm. one second. Your Honor, I would like to speak on my own behalf. Mr. Smith, as I discussed yesterday, I would not. I will fire you. I will fire you. I would like to speak on my own behalf, Your Honor. Mr. Smith? I, you looking nice today, Your Honor, too. Mr. Smith, it yes, may, Honor, not, I, may not be in your best behavior. Uh, best, uh, benefit. I know, but I probably want to fire Please you. Please don't interrupt me again as I'm talking. Do you understand that? Yes, yes, Your Honor, Washington. All right. It's probably not in your best interest to do that, sir. You're here before this court, um, and I am um, very, very bothered by the fact that the last time you were given a personal recognizance bond, you now have a new matter with, which you're charged with assault with intent to do great bodily harm, and um, that occurred after you were given a bond in this particular case that um, I had actually set a no bond on you for. So um, I don't know if it's in your best interest to speak for yourself at this time. Well, can I go to a breakout room with my attorney? Yeah, you might want to do that. You can go with, um, this is how many more in custody do we that's our last in custody, but he's our only PD. So and we still have this one. Um, this is a private matter. Right and your honor, I'm not found guilty of that crime yet. I understand you aren't found guilty, sir. But here's the deal. The reality is you're not getting out today. That's I know I'm not getting out today, your honor. I know that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjourn this. No, please. I, I would like to speak. I would like to speak because my grandfather want to speak. My granny want to speak. My grandmother want to speak. What are you talking about? Those people are not here. They are here. My grandmother want to speak. My grandfather want to speak. My daddy want to speak. And my grandpa want to speak. Well, unfortunately, they don't control what the court does. Can they please speak, Your Honor? No. Your Honor, I'm going through psychosis right now. I can't control nothing inside my head. I swear I'm hearing voices. I hear my grandpa voice. I hear my grandma voice. I hear my granny voice. And I hear my dad voice. My psychosis is too bad right now. They want to speak so bad, Your Honor. My psychosis is too bad right now, Your Honor. I'm going through psychosis. Okay. Huh. Oh, Ms. McDuffie. I'll try, Your Honor. So I know that last time we were here, I think when Mr. Smith was sentenced, I was taken aback at the recommendation because it was just fines and costs, uh, essentially, for this type of offense with use. But I also understand that I think the original recommendation was probably because Mr. Smith was just not a good candidate for probation. Um, so we're here on a few things. Um, it, he was sent to... Uh, I believe, test and did not report for that he, when he was arraigned on that violation. Um, I He reported he tested positive. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. Um, yes, because my ex-girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, she was a crackhead and she was born in my face. Her name, Donna Maldonado. Donna Jo Maldonado. And she was born crack in my face. So regardless of, I think, the um, mention of some contact high of crack cocaine, I believe it just was. Um, obviously, my bigger, well, it's not my bigger concern. The underlying case is controlled substance use. So the violation 
never did. I never did smoke to, crack or cocaine. I'm going to okay, so please stop interrupting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to adjourn this matter. Um, I'm going to adjourn it over to actually uh, next week on the 26th. Mr. Lebo, go out and see your client. Can I please talk to you, Your Honor, before you leave, get off me? Please go out and see your client and um, determine whether or not he is actually competent. Is he referred in his other case, Mr. Lebo? Your Honor, I am not the attorney in his other matter. I did speak to him yesterday. He did not, he was not behaving this way at that time. I will well, reach out. On his behavior today, he really um, needs to be referred. I agree, Your Honor. He's uh, alleging psychosis. He cannot maintain his uh, ability to stop interrupting the court or anyone else that is speaking. Um, I cannot speak to uh, whether there is uh, malingering or what is going on, but the fact of the matter is that at this point in time, this is not going to work. And so um, I'm going to adjourn it to October 26th. You have to do an interview with him. Please let me know what you think. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Your Honor, should I submit Your Honor. Order? Your Honor, please. Yes. I can be quiet, Your Honor. I swear I can. Your Honor, should I submit a competency referral order to the court? If after speaking to him, you deem that's necessary, please do so. Thank you, Your Honor. Was that the 26th, Your Honor? Yes, October 26, 2023, at 10 o'clock a.m. And Your Honor, just to put, I'm sorry, go ahead, Your Honor. I wasn't speaking. I, the thing I really wanted to clarify was just that um, the problem we had the last time was that Mr. Smith was never actually on any form of probation reporting or non-reporting, so there couldn't be a VOP file. So I just wanted to kind of clarify where we are with um, what that type of hearing is going to be. I see. Yes, Your Honor, I did intend to address that myself. I was unable to do so. So he had seven days of community service, $525 in fines and costs, and then I he appeared for a review, and at that time, I wanted uh, on August seventeenth, he was to test, and if he was negative, then he could continue with no testing. But if he was positive, then he had to uh, continue testing. He was positive and failed to continue testing. That's why the bond was issued for no bond. Okay, so, so we're not really having a hearing. No. So okay. A violation of probation at this point. We'll have to figure out what to do with respect to his sentence based on where we are with that, but I need to see if he's competent. Your Honor, just as a, for some procedural clarification, I'm unclear as to what Mr. Siap, Mr. Smith is being held in this matter, given that he's not on a probationary sentence that could be revoked. He's in violation of all of the court's orders. He has not completed his reporting to probation. He has not completed any of his fines and costs. He has not done his community service. Yes, Your Honor what he is in custody for. He didn't complete any of the terms of his sentence. So I can come back, bring him back here and simply sentence him to the full time where we can talk about whether or not um, he is what he wants to do at that time and whether he's confident. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. And that would be Mr. Bellinger, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. And do you also understand that if you're on probation, parole, or bond at the time that you committed this offense, which is June 14th of 2023, then you could be in violation of that probation, that bond, or that parole? Do you understand that part? Oh, if I was already on a previous bond. Correct. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I wasn't, so yeah. <laughs> okay. And you weren't. All right. Thank you. And if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could have immigration consequences. Do you understand that part? Mm -hmm. yeah. And are you a U.S. citizen, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a, right. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a dual citizen, so yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. All right. Having said that, sir, to the charge of assault or assault and battery, how do you plead? Uh... I wasn't, I think I just say that I uh, threw a book 
my plea guilty, not guilty. To which, how do you plead? Guilty. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't specific. I wasn't that that part wasn't specified. I just like to go word by word, specificity by specificity, and it. You talk to someone very quickly, so yeah. Hmm. Are you? So at this point, so I need to know if you're pleading guilty or not guilty. Yeah. So you have to, you have to say the words, not me. Okay. So how what, you... Yeah, yeah. I I'm, I apologize. I just whatever gets me to the plea deal that we're going for. If that's guilty, then guilty. Your Honor, may I may I question Mr. Weitz? Yes, you may. Mr. Weitz, do you want to plead guilty today? Yeah, yeah. I want to plead guilty today. All right. Has anyone promised you anything other than what's been placed on the record to get you to plead guilty, sir? No. <laughs> anyone threaten you in any way, shape, or form? No, no. Now let's turn to the date of offense. On June 14th of 2023, were you at the vicinity of 516 Rosedale Road in Ypsilanti Township, sir? Yes. And at the time you were there, was there someone named, is it Jose Vites present? Yes, to both, yeah. Okay. And, um, and on that date and time, did you assault and or assault and battery uh, Mr. Jose Vites? Yeah, yeah, I threw a book at him. Okay. He didn't give you permission to throw that book at him, did he? No, he didn't say here. <laughs> All right. I find that there's a factual basis for the plea that's been willingly and only made. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, ma'am. Likewise, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Sentencing in this case will be on November 30th, 2023 at 10 a.m. Sir, you're going to need to make and keep an appointment with the probation department to have a pre-sentence investigation report done. I'm going to give you a phone number and everyone else should write down this phone number at this time in case they are referred to the probation department. Do you have a pen to write it down, sir? I do. 734. Mr. Hayes, you should be writing this down this number as well. Okay, hold on a second. I got a pen right here. Seven three four four eight three seven three three six. Everyone should be writing down this number in case they get referred to probation. Please call them tomorrow after nine o'clock, Mr. Wrights. Okay. And they're going to schedule a time for you to have a pre-sentence investigation report that needs to have that interview needs to happen before your uh, next court date. So you'd be prepared for sentencing. Okay. Okay. You're all set, Mr. Vites. Have a good day. Thank you. You as well. Your bond was $5,000. It is doubled to $10,000. You must have a drug patch as a condition of bond. And... Did you, uh, you have a lawyer? I was going to give him mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need to fill out one of those indigent forms, uh, and then I can appoint somebody to represent you because uh, you were not represented. Huh? Have a brief moment to speak with Go ahead. I've been trying to make an excuse. I'm sorry about that. You shouldn't be showing up in while on bond or at any time using drugs and handling pro problems like that. Any kind of problems irresponsibly using illegal drugs is a poor way to do it. But we have rules and we're going to follow the rules. Yes, and I'm not letting you amble out of here into the roadway when you're high on drugs. And then you either if you're driving, you hit somebody or you walk in front of somebody and they hit you. But the fact of the matter is when you're on my bond. Yes, I'm going to be accountable if something you do something bad on my watch irresponsibly. Yes, you have to follow the rules. And that's what I'm doing is treating you like everybody else. When you flunk a drug test, your bond is revoked. It gets doubled. And you have to have a drug patch as a condition of bond. If you have family issues, I, uh, this is the way I do it. My family comes first, not my drugs. Yes. 
So I don't have sympathy with anyone like that. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is you what, getting high is more important than than your family. But you like to use your family when you're in a crack like now. Oh, now all of a sudden your family's important. It wasn't hard for me to look into the eyes of my children or my wife when I was about to make a decision that would be the right decision or the wrong decision. Because I could see how much I could lose with what, with what I care about. You, on the other hand, and many like you who come here, unfortunately, care more about drug usage. But that costs you. Your family shouldn't be second and third. They should be number one. You should be way down the list. Taking care of your drug needs shouldn't be number one. And when that happens, you lose, you sacrifice, and you lose wonderful things. And the family suffers because they rely on you as the role model, as the leader of the family, you're, which you're not doing properly. That's my lecture. That is all. Go on. Okay, this Tiara Norman was reset. George, I, my mind is a steel trap. Michelle, isn't my mind a steel trap?